microdose, yeah, microdose, 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 dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here, coming to you. newest edition of the microdose. They're all new. I know, I know, I know, guys. But hey, that's that's it's, it's called an intro. That's just how these things work. And. uh uh, how things work is I like to build tradition and, uh, you know, establish patterns. And, uh, well, it's been 54 weeks, but coming from the big potato, the CEO of Nine Realms Athletics, Sean Thompson. What's good, buddy? How you doing? Kush, how you doing, man? Uh, thank you for having me. I, I actually, uh, yeah, you too. I, I didn't realize I thought it had been uh, around the beginning of the year. And uh, I, I kind of like the the new tradition. Let's keep, let's keep it rolling. Hey man, that's what's up. If we can get you in here more. That uh, that would be good too. I was listening to our previous episode before we got started tonight. You know, just to remind myself a few things. And yeah, we I think we both started off the year in a compromised spot for for lack mm-hmm. of a better word. But uh, I can't speak for you. Actually, what what little I have heard with you is a uh, we, we we're both on a path of growth, and we are doing much better, much better than we were this time last year. Would, would you confirm or deny that? I can confirm last year started rough and it continued rough. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was one of those, it was a, a lot of ups and downs, but truly believe everything happens for a reason. And it's, it's wild. And I think we'll, we'll probably get into it. Um, it's wild how things happen in life, how things kind of come full circle. So, but uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how things can, can come full circle in life. And, uh, it's uh man it's weird um yeah going right. through stuff and, and and you sit there and you think I, I try to i tell people when i help them i'm like things happen and you might not know why mm-hmm. but then at some point in life you'll realize that you'll realize why it happened and it just kind of makes the the tough stuff a little bit easier knowing that at some point the purpose will uh reveal itself so I don't mean to get super full, philosophical here, but yeah, like sometimes you, you, you need that rough patch or that, uh, that challenge for lack of, again, a, a lack of a better phrase, but like this previous weekend, I worked monster supercross at the uh, Oracle park in San Francisco, 10 tons of dirt. They bulldozed in there, which is kind of frustrating because the groundskeepers yell at us like bitches. If like, <laughs> One little pinky toe gets on the grass, and sure, I'm sure there's a tarp and there's a bunch of like plastic panels. But yeah, again, you, you breathe on the grass wrong, and you get like the fucking tenth degree from the the groundskeepers. <laughs> Me, uh, so, anyways, it also rained. My shift was twelve hours, and eleven of those I was out in the rain. Um, fortunately, I was in a position where I could just like carry an umbrella with me and, and, until we had just like put all the toys back in the box, and then you just. You just get soaked. There's no no escape in it. But it is yep. as miserable as it was. The next day, you kind of just like, I was fucked. And then you have a little chuckle to yourself, and you, you move on with life. Um, I've only been in a few positions like that, but they've almost always involved monsoons and tsunamis in my job. <laughs> yep. So, so where I was going with that is, would you say that? Uh, would you say that's something similar to your 2023 going into 2024? Now it's like, man. <clears throat> Where where we were one year ago now, like oh god, glad well, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah, I feel uh, in life and marriage and everything, it's like a, a whole different person. I've, I've said for a long time, like positives aren't as positive if you if you don't have negatives. So like those those ups feel a little bit better when you have downs. Mm-hmm. It all kind of balances out. So. Man, I got I got no complaints. You know, there's still you know still issues and still things to deal with, but For sure. that's that's life. And but in general, I, I couldn't I couldn't be happier. Yeah, that's what's up, man. What what has changed for the positive, if I may ask? I was retired um, from my mm-hmm. previous career back in May. I'm still battling with them for my actual medical retirement, but um, I won't won't go too too deep into that but coming to terms with you know losing losing a career moving on from that something that i worked a long long time for and i worked really hard at was was tough but uh again one of those things that everything happens for a reason um i think we talked about 
with Nine Realms Athletics, my wife and I working on something big. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was supposed to be done by now, and it's not. But um, we have been working for quite a while on working on opening a gym. Okay. So nice. it's closer, but we're still still in the process. And we've. Oh yeah, I gotta oh, imagine go there's just uh, all sorts of red tape and hoops that they got. Like Idaho, California, r- regardless of where you are, I imagine they make you go through all sorts of nonsense before they go. Like here are the keys. Sort of, man. The town we're in is weird. Is like we we had a we had a sit down with the mayor, the old mayor, um, and like the what is it, the zoning and planning officer, and we sat down and they gave us their they showed us their fifteen year development plan and where everything was going to go. So we got it got to kind of see see where it'd be an optimal place for us to put put our business. And I, at that point, I asked the mayor. I was like, hey. I didn't see anything on your website on, on biz, a business license. Like I want to make sure all, you know, I's are dotted, T's are crossed, make sure we get all the paperwork done. Um, and I didn't see it. And he goes, Oh yeah, you don't need one. I was like, uh, ex- excuse me. And he's like, Nope, we, we don't have a business license. I'm like, so I can just open doors. And he's all, yeah, pretty much. Oh. I'm like, Oh, well that's, <laughs> that's a, that's a lot different than California. A so, lot of different, yes, sir. But uh, so yeah, we we're still working on that. It's been a, I mean, you. So the best thing I can equate it to is, as you know, booking wrestling shows mm-hmm. is extremely stressful. But it's a, um, it's it, it was it was always like a good stress, like because you got to see the final the final outcome, right, mm-hmm. and going through the learn, like I look back at this time last year where we were of, you know, learning to write a business plan and, you know, going through presentation meetings with these, you know, big developers and high rises and, and, and Boise and going through all these things. I I never thought I would be doing one. And then, you know, we're, we're sitting there doing it and um it's cool. It's it's a cool process. It's you know working with architects and design groups and you know laying out buildings and um, yeah, it's a ton of work, but but it's been fun. Just a ballpark range. When do you think you will get to open the doors? It's looking like potentially May June. Um, okay. We've had a few, a couple hiccups, and we might have to shift a little bit, but we're hoping. We're hoping by third quarter of okay. uh, twenty four is is the goal. So we have a lot of a lot of big stuff planned to do internally um, and to run through the business through the gym, but uh, to do a lot of work with the community and and help specifically veterans, first responders, but also you know do a lot of work with the youth and kids and teaching kids new, proper nutrition and how to exercise, how to lift. It's a lot of stuff like that. Try to be part of the community and and give give back. It's been well over a decade since I last worked in a gym. Do you think? It, and and I, that, this this might not even be a first year thing to do, but do you think you might offer like some sort of Twitch channel or YouTube channel to accompany your your personal training or not personal training, but your group training exercise? Like <clears throat> you got thirty people in the class, but hey, other people want to be a part of it too. People that aren't in in Boise. People that aren't near Idaho, like you think you might be able to do something like that. Like, hey, seven o'clock Central Time, we're we're gonna have a class and uh, you know, tip a few bucks if you can. For sure. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about doing stuff like that with uh my, my wife's gonna be running our our training program. She's gonna be our training manager. She's gonna handle all, all that. But that's definitely something that we've we've discussed. Cause there's some people that uh can't make it in all the time and mm-hmm giving people options of, you know, there's some people who split their time between the gym and working out at home. So try to try to give some of those people a way to stay on top of their goals and uh, things they want to achieve. So that's definitely something that we're not sure if that'll be kind of a year one thing, but that's something we're definitely trying to to gear towards and get more out of social media and technology. Try to use that stuff uh, to our advantage. I don't want to give away a lot of the, a lot of the secrets. Um, 
the secret ingredients and stuff, stuff that we have, we have planned that we want to do um, from day one, but we definitely want to make things a whole lot more fun and interactive and educational um, user friendly for people. So it'll be, that's definitely our goal going into this. Outstanding. So, and uh, the URL is still up. Is it nine realms.com? Nine realms athletics.com. Store is still open. We're going to relaunch with some new stuff, but we're kind of waiting till, till we're announcing and revamping the, the website for the gym. And then we'll, we'll have a whole bunch of stuff that'll be new designs and a uh, new look. So, but people can people can go. They can throw their email in there. Um, subscribe. We don't send out a lot of stuff right now, but as things ramp up, we'll definitely be putting out more information. There it is. Last time you were here, we were talking about uh, some movies. Did you get to see the Cocaine Bear? And I did not. It's even on. And we'll get into this. I fly a lot, okay. and it is on the airlines. And I've I try to take advantage of watching movies when I'm when I'm flying and that's one like I've I've almost watched it multiple times and <laughs> I, I, I just ne- I, I never did um oh my god is it one of those things yeah, where you're like but, I've heard so much about it now that I don't feel it'll live up to the hype or or you just just something's changed no, in your just, heart it, it's just one of those where like I I try to sleep on the plane um okay, because I hate flying and but there's times where like i'm scrolling and i'm like okay that'd be fun like i went to watch meg the other day the with uh (laughs) what is uh with statham yeah Mm -hmm. and like i was gonna watch it and then i was like oh the hurricane is on here i've Mm -hmm. never seen that the old uh, denzel denzel washington yeah that's a good one too yeah obviously Um, one was better i don't think denzel has had a bad movie he's never had a bad performance he's been in a couple stinkers still but uh, that's not the point yeah so, but the, like, so I'll see like Cocaine Bear, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, it's possible. I'll see what else there is. Oh, the new Mission Impossible. Eh, I'm probably gonna watch Mission Impossible. <laughs> so, Mission Impossible. But, but really I'll good. have to that that newest one. What was that one called again? Uh, Dead Reckoning. Mission Impossible. Dead Reckoning. Part Jeez. Seven. Dead Reckoning. Part One. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was joking. That the that's at least how it opened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that movie was so good. It's pretty good, man. Like Tom Cruise knows how to do it. It's weird that uh, yeah, Barbie blew it out of the water the next week. Like everyone, oh well, what are you gonna do? So. The the hardest part about it is the plot of it. It's so realistic to what's going on now with the AI and yes, those, uh, I found that a potent- very fun coincidence. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean. You want to go down a, a conspiracy theory rabbit hole? I kind of feel like some yes, of I these do. things they they <laughs> some of these things to me with with Hollywood and, and some of these shows and movies they put these things out to kind of test the waters and normalize. Mm-hmm. So when people see it in reality, it's like eh, it's not that big of a deal. I've been watching TV shows on it. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that one movie? I think it was with it was that the AI. Okay, robot yeah, yeah. Movie. you saw the creator with and, uh, John John David Washington, son of Denzel. Yes, is that is that his son? It is his son, yes, sir. Wow, yeah. So then they then they had those robots. The I don't know. I, I don't know if they were real. I don't know if they were people dressed up, but apparently they had them at like you know sporting events, sitting in in stands. Oh, fun. and it's and it's just creepy and it's it it just feels like trying to like just normalize and so when you see this thing in the future you're like yeah it's not a big yeah it's not a big deal we've been we've been watching this on tv for a while now that movie is a little biased i'm pretty sure i did not know they did the promotional gimmick at the sporting events that's very funny Mm -hmm. that's most likely a dude in a green screen suit and then they brought in a whole other production truck just to key in the robot for for the live okay. TV. Yeah, I bet it was no less than that. Honestly, a whole truck just for that one special effect on live TV. Um, but yeah, the the movie is a little biased. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I, I thought it was a very pretty movie. I even got into the story. But yeah, you know, it's a, America's the bad guy, and you know, 
these robots aren't so bad. They they didn't start it, but they're gonna finish it. And you know, it's, right. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I'm not sure I'm ready to jump off off that yet. But yes, um, a bit. We had a writers' strike and an actors' strike this summer, and a big AI mm-hmm. was a big part of it. Um, however, going back to Tom Cruise, I happen to think he might be the one one of the few minorities like. No, I'm I'm plugging myself in, dude. You're gonna be seeing Tom Cruise for the next 50 years, baby. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm never gonna stop running. And I think you and I are gonna come out of a theater in 30 years and be like, that motherfucker still got it. He died 15 yeah. years ago, but he still got it, dude. Like, that shit was amazing. Well, did you see the thing when he did the thing? Like, aren't aren't actors doing that? They're like selling their likeness. Is isn't that a, isn't that a thing that they're talking about? Like, where they can sell their likeness so they can continue using it. Well, some are doing that. Bruce Willis did that, and then we found out he he's got <laughs> dementia or multiple sclerosis or or all sorts yeah. of ill shit that retired him. So it's just like, no, I need to keep this cash train coming in. And uh, everyone's yeah. like, yeah, okay, you do you, Bruce. The, the studios were being sneaky. So like you know, day players, uh, friend friend of the family, friend of both of ours, AJ Kirsch. Like he will most likely in a if not already will one day be presented with uh so we're gonna plug you in and uh, we're gonna just use you in a bunch of background shots and uh you know that's you have to consent to this otherwise you're not gonna get work and by the way that's right. the weird buzzword you have to consent or otherwise we won't <laughs> we won't do it yeah is it consent if you're forced to consent yeah no <laughs> Yeah, the, that that was the big thing with the strike, and yeah, I feel them. You know, it, that that should be a thing you want to do. Again, Tom Cruise, we're gonna see that fool for another fifty years. Everyone else, right? I'm not too sure. And then like, this came up on a, the Waffle Box podcast the other day, where it's just like there are no boundaries on it yet. Like people in, I don't know what country they're in, but like people have taken Gal Gadot's face and put it on some porn star and now you're just watching gal gadot getting reamed in a porn that she absolutely did not submit to or consent to right and that's <laughs> what they're trying to fight like what what are the boundaries what what can they do and you know also you don't want chris pratt probably doesn't want his face in a project that ultimately just is a stinker i mean it's yeah. subjective he may <laughs> have already been in one of those but still that's so that's the whole thing with ai like there, there could be a lot of cool benefits out of it, but what, what, what what's the rules? We, we haven't established right. that yet. So, right. And then, um, you know, again, if you are one of those unfortunate people who had to consent to being a background character, like you get <laughs> 20 bucks for that every time they use you, or is it just one $300 flat fee for the day? Like, right. Yeah. You know, that, that stuff's all fuzzy, but it, there's some weird language in the actor's, um, in the act new actors contract for the next three years so maybe it'll change in um 2027 but uh yeah they're they're still feeling it out yeah it's weird uh, just the like you're saying the possibilities of of like the deep fakes yeah it, like i've, I've seen so some crazy fucking deep fakes man where i'm just like oh no yeah and yes, it could be you. You know, in the in most cases, probably used innocently, right? Like memes or stupid, stupid shit. But the possibility of using it for influence, or mm-hmm. you know, there's a new George weird. Carlin special out now. That's weird. <laughs> Wait, is there really? There is really someone uh, uploaded a bunch of George Carlin stand up and uh, many of his 14 specials, if not all of them, and they produced. A brand new posthumous George Carlin special. I don't like it. Yeah, I, weird, I, don't, right? I don't like it. <laughs> I haven't brought myself to try and listen to it yet. A couple of folks I know of, like, it, it sounds like an impersonation. So we're, yeah. we're, they're still working the kinks out. Like, but there's some great photos that come out of this AI stuff. Have you seen the photo where there's this very large, rotund man wearing denim cutoffs? He's got combat boots on. And he's given a fucking sidekick to an alligator. No. It's the most amazing thing you've ever seen, Sean. And I was like, I need to know what this was. Where did this event come from? And then someone like, that's an AI generated photo. I was like, I'm disappointed because this thing looks amazing. Because it needs to be real. It needs to be real. There's a follow-up poster uh, or photo with that same man and that same alligator sharing a a pizza together. And that is also delightful. (laughs) 
Uh, that is amazing. Yeah, so, so th- sometimes, hopefully, it's used for good. But there, there can be some cool stuff out of it. But then there's like again, what are the rules? Yeah. So I would absolutely say uh, if you if you ever do get presented or finally see the get the urge to see Cocaine Bear, plain ain't it. It's not the most graphic or gory movie in the world, but they're gonna edit it for for the kids, and you just be like, oh, that's kind of lame. I don't, you, I don't think they do they do on the plane because I've I've watched uh, movies with nudity on the plane. Interesting, interesting. So I will I will have to make it a point on my neck next week. I go to Savannah, Georgia, so I'll okay. see. I think it should be a long enough flight. I'll see if I can watch it on on that one. Then you're gonna be that dirty old man just watching porn in the corner, like <laughs> what? <laughs> Testing out theory. Kush told me, <laughs> and my pants aren't on. Shut up. Uh, I, I I I think it depends on air, airline to airline, but like Probably. I was on my way to Amsterdam one year, and I was like, "Oh, the new Tom Cruise, The Mummy." I I heard this was dog shit, and there's this whole, regardless of whether that's true or incorrect, there's a big bold plane crash where you know they're getting thrown around in zero g and all that, and that was absolutely edited. And I was like, "Yeah, I kind of get it. We're on a plane. Yeah, that's going to give yeah. people anxiety." So, um, oh yeah. <laughs> Did you see the Evil Dead? Uh, Evil Dead uh, 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 colon something or other. Rising. Evil Dead Rising. I, I did, and what'd you think? I wasn't a big fan. Oh, I wasn't sure. a big fan. Was it the yeah, kids? It was, Were you upset uh, that the kids got murdered? Because I said fuck those kids. Man, I don't even know if it was the if it was the kids or I just I don't know. It was just the whole story. It didn't feel Evil Dead to me. Okay. Um, interesting. If it was called anything else, then maybe it could have been a different movie entirely. Like, yeah. Yeah, but that it was it was billed as Evil Dead just kind of kind of threw it off for me a little bit. But mm. you know, you can't you can't win them all. No, I guess not. I guess not. The, the only, my only problem with the Evil Dead Rising was the shoe horned in uh, Easter eggs. Or, you know, the chain, she has to have a chainsaw. She has to say, come get some bitch. Didn't need right. any of that. That I absolutely didn't yeah. need. Otherwise, yeah. I was just like, this is dope. I'm enjoying all of yeah. this. <laughs> this little girl who's a little boy is confusing me, but okay. <laughs> uh, what else did I see recently? That uh, uh, The Mission Impossible's uh, Equalizer 3. Great goddamn movie, dude. <laughs> yeah. I've been telling people all about that, and some of them are like, "Yeah, I don't know," uh, and others are just like, "Whoa, really?" I was just like, "Denzel Washington stabs a man in the face with a pistol, and then uses it as a yep. suppressor to kill everyone else in the room." And you're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, it's like old old John Wick. Yeah, but yeah. No, I loved I loved the Equalizer three this year. That was a very nice surprise. That um, yep. that series has been consistently consistently strong. Like the first two. <laughs> Still felt like, oh, this is a, a movie adaptation of this TV show from the 80s that we've modernized. But then this one, they just went like, yeah, those last movies were kind of violent, but we're going balls to the ball on this one, bitch. Yeah. We're so leaving I an impression. I haven't, I haven't seen number two. Um, number two is good. But I need to, I, I liked the number one. And then, of course, on the plane, they only have like, they, they just have three. So I'm like, all right, well, now I got to find number two because I got to see them all. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, Equalizer 3 was the shortest of the three. And okay. um, the town he's in, in, in E3, is the B storyline. Whereas in parts one and part two, like he's setting up the character. He helps this person. He interacts with this person. He has a thing with this other person. And then we get into the plot. And that's like 20 yeah. minutes right there. And they're like, eh, let's just remove all of that. Like, he'll meet some people. <laughs> he'll help out a guy. He'll embarrass the bad guys. But let's let's keep this under two hours. And they were so right. Yeah. They, uh, <sighs> Antoine Fuqua, who did all three of those, is now doing the Michael Jackson biopic. How do you think that's going to be? Interesting. I need to catch up on the biopics because I didn't see uh, Queen. That's fun. I don't know if it was best oh. picture good, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an int- every, So Everything is based on a true story. So everything is altered by a lot, but you know, yeah. it's a queen yeah. soundtrack and it's got some fun visuals. And if you watch it in a the theater, you, you, you bob your head. 
Like I, I had yeah. a good time watching that. The Elton John movie is okay. The Whitney Houston movie either. is moderately me average. Like that that should have been way better than it was. It's kind of disappointing, even. Was Bobby in it? The the in character Luke? Bobby Brown, yes, sir. Not the actor, obviously. But yeah, he he's uh he he has a little part in that. I saw the, the Beekeeper this past weekend. Oh, the George Foreman movie, dude. Was, that was thing is really all messed good. up. No, you didn't like it. It's sh- that movie could have been split up into three movies, honestly. Like it, just, it, it ru- again, like the Whitney Houston movie, it rushes through things very quickly, and you're just like, right, wait, what? Yeah, eh, ah. you know, it, it, it should have. If you didn't want, if they don't want it to be three movies, then they should start it with he's been retired, he's an out of shape right. bastard, he he needs the big comeback and work on that instead of. I don't know. The flow was terrible. Yeah, it was. I was thrown off because a lot of the um, like training scenes, and I was like, hey, I wasn't pushing a jeep or whatever. And then like, and then at the end, they they show you like the still photos or actual video of him doing doing the things in the movie. I was like, oh, they actually did a pretty good job. Like some of the his, the way he fought, the actor mm-hmm. fought, yeah. was was pretty good for. For George Foreman, I thought the the fights were a little lackluster, um, yes. but overall, it was it was pretty entertaining. Uh, I mean, every all my complaints are movie. budget, budget and story length. Like they they, I mean, they didn't want to make a bad movie. No one does. Yeah. So, but it just it could have been a lot better. He's he's actually got a much more complicated story. Like it could have been a Netflix series. That would have probably been better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a whole episode, he could have just spent in in Berkeley or, or whatever in the East Bay. You know that that that's a whole episode right there. Then he goes to the Olympics. Then he becomes a pro. Then we talk about life app ap- anyway, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the yeah the beekeeper, dude, I think you're gonna freaking love. <laughs> Who was was that? Was that that's uh, a Statham? That's the new Statham. Statham, Statham. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's not his best Good. movie. It's 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 very entertaining. It is stupid as shit, but it is very entertaining. <laughs> it's a it's a David Ayer movie. He's the guy who did Fury the Tank and uh, Academy Award winning Suicide Squad. Um, he uh, 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 the Netflix movie Bright with Will Smith, where it's you know Lord of the Rings meets Training Day. So it's it's very polished, but it it, it might be his worst movie. Again, it's. It's it's very strange that a man of his caliber is doing a movie this this low budget, and then the guy who wrote it, he's got some hits, but then he's also got, got a, a trilogy of like terrible remakes. If you want a terrible remake, this is the dude to write with. Um, oh really? <laughs> he did the remake for Total Recall, uh, which, yeah. which was only okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's only okay, but it wasn't great, and it wasn't the first Total Recall. Um, he did the Point Break remake. Which is just abominable. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't get behind that one, dude. Uh, you you would have a better time dropping a cinder block on your foot. <laughs> I, I've done that. I've yeah. done that. And That's... then, not that the first one was any good, but he did a Children of the Corn remake, and you know, just whatever, 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 dude. But um, th- this dude made a fun movie, uh, or this guy wrote a fun movie. It's again, it's incredibly stupid, and I, I have to wonder when he wrote it because. The whole thing is about uh, Jason Statham works for Felicia Rashad. She like does a bunch of charity work and this and that, and she's like responsible for a bunch of bank accounts and like has millions of dollars at her disposal. Uh, you know that she this is all important stuff, and she gets that pop up window on her laptop. It's like you've been hacked. Uh, call this number, and we're gonna fix it for you. And she makes the mistake of doing that, and uh, they, of course they clear her out instead of just like I should call a bank. Or answer any of the texts that the banks are now sending me. Fraud alert, fraud alert, fraud alert. Like, <laughs> cybersecurity has come a long way in the last 20 years, dude. Like, there was a time when that right. shit was gone, but they'll, they'll, they'll put it back right away. Like, oh, yeah, like, this looks suspicious. Let's, let's get, let's put that money back. Anyway, she, she just oversees all that. It's like, well, I guess it's time to put a gun in my mouth. Uh oh. <laughs> so it was a typical Statham movie then. I get. I mean, yeah, that's fair to say, dude. 
And of course, he's a man with very special skills and he comes from a super secret organization. But then, like, you know, as ridiculous all this sounds, at some point, like, it does become a G.I. Joe cartoon where, like, a, a chick is in the back of a, a, a of a Toyota pickup with a Gatling gun just blowing up gas stations. She's got the giant purple mohawk. And, you know, again, she looks like a cartoon character. Like, so, And then this thing goes just, like, way out of bounds where you're just like, really? The president's involved in this? What the fuck? <laughs> So, yeah, but th- those are the kind, those are the kind of action movies I'm into. Just the kind of ridic- ridiculous. Yeah, I dare you not to love uh, it. Expendables Four is one I still need to see. Also, no, you do not. No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I don't know what you thought about uh, Expendables Two and Three. Um, I still love the first one. I'm not saying it's a good movie, but I still love the first one. Um, everything after that has been dog crap, and it is not. Part four is not any better. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll keep that in mind. I'll go in with an open mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I can only show you the path, son. It's up to you to take it. So um wouldn't be the first terrible movie I've seen on uh, purpose. So fair enough. Fair enough. You've been warned. You've been warned. <laughs> you, you you get into any of the Jack Reacher TV show yet? No. Um, I know you messaged me about that, and I just haven't uh I don't get a lot of TV time. It's pretty much kiddo watching watching her stuff and Fair enough. um I bet you that's gonna be on the football next plane ride. It might be. I'll have to I'll have to look and see. Yeah. Because it's they're what three seasons? Two seasons? Uh two seasons now. Two seasons. Uh season two will wrap up this week even. So uh, I gotta okay. say I mean it ain't the greatest show in the world, but it hasn't suffered from any other streaming series I've watched where I'm like, oh, Despite that this is only nine episodes, there's still filler. I haven't felt any of that. Like okay. it's one of the few series I'm just like, oh dude, every episode like has a purpose. This is good. But I, I, I dare you to watch into like episode three of the first season and be like, this feels very familiar. This reminds me of the summer of twenty fourteen. What the did, did, did a camera crew follow me? What the fuck? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to give that one a shot. <laughs> My friend, I think we could talk for hours and hours and hours, but I know you need to get to your little girl there. Um, again, tell everyone where they can find Nine Realms Athletics. I know it's dot com, but still. Yeah, Nine Realms Athletics dot com. Uh, check us out on Instagram. Eh, don't do much on Facebook, but we're still on there. Do a lot on Instagram. Check us out. We have a lot of big updates coming up soon. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, they can't see me. You can. Not on um, wood. Yeah, knock on wood. But um, let's do this again soon. That'd be great, man. Please, sooner than later. I, I love this. Love having you at the top of the year, but let's get you a couple more times in this year. So anyway, folks, I do some stuff around here. It's called The Waffle Box. It's the original Waffle Box. It's the people's podcast, and it's the best part of Wednesdays. You accept no substitutions. Coming all the way from the future home of Super Bowl 60, you love us because we do this, and we do this because we love you. So... For Sean Thompson, Nine Realms Athletics, I've been Cushes, you've been you. Micro dose, 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 yeah, micro dose. From the Bosnet family. You want to go down a, a conspiracy theory rabbit hole like some yes, of I these? Do.